Having already spent nearly £250 million during the Mikel Arteta regime, the Arsenal owners accept to back the Spaniard massively once again. So are the Gunners eyeing up Atletico Madrid's expensive wonderboy Jao Felix? Also is Mikel Arteta set for a brand new contract? And how will he tactically line up Arsenal against Wolves on Thursday? Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14. Welcome back to your boys channel. And as you can see today, it's Band-Aid FC. Not much more I can do, but your boy is still here. So smash a like if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new. And help your boy as we are closing in the 75,000 subscribers. But let's get into that article news and starting off with Jao Felix. Back in 2019, when Athletic chose to drop 120 million pounds on then teenager Jao Felix, a lot of eyebrows were raised. At that point, Felix had only played one full season where he scored 15 goals and 27 league appearances. So yes, while it was very, very highly rated, £120 million is a lot of money. And let's just say in terms of that transfer for Atletico Madrid's sake, it hasn't quite worked out. As Felix is now three years into his Atletico career and he's still yet to even hit 10 league goals in a single season. He's now 22 years of age. Of course, he's a Portuguese international and still he's very highly rated. But the fact they paid so much money for him, things haven't worked out. And it looks like Diego Simeone is open to letting go of what should have been their poster boy. And then enter this seen Arsenal Football Club, the centerpiece of Project Youth, a team that has given young players a platform to strive and become potential superstars. So according to Spanish reporter Eduardo Inda, he claims that João Felix is a very good player and that Arsenal want him. In terms of Simeone, his objective is to change Felix for Guedes. The problem Atleti have is that he will cost 120 million euros and getting that back is something that can only be done if he is sold to the Premier League. João Felix the Arsenal Football Club, now first things first, yes, a tremendous young player and if it's career mode FC, of course I'm taking it. But then again, this isn't Football Manager, this is real life. And then you have to ask yourself the question of is Jao Felix worth the report £110 million price tag? In terms of so far this year, he's got only three goals and three assists. And even in terms of last, he only had 10 goals and 40 appearances. So if you're an Arthur fan that wants to see Arthur sign a goal scoring traditional number nine, look away right now because Jao Felix isn't that guy. But there also must be a reason to why Arthur liked this guy in the first place. And that's because in terms of Felix, he excels in terms of pass completion, mate. Dribbles completely and keeping that ball in the final third, retaining possession, you could say that Jao Felix can become potentially a very good false nine type of profile. So looking at how Liverpool operate, how Man City operate, I think Arsenal also wants to go into that role where they would like to see their number nine score goals, but also link up play and become a false nine like Roberto Firmino. And instead of your number nine being a recognised goal scorer, you have the likes of Bukayo Saka, Gabriel Martinelli, Emil smith Rowe, Martin Odegaard and Cole all stepping up and all chipping over the goals as well. Now here is a graphic that compares Jao Felix to Alexandre Lacazette. Now Felix is in that blue and as you can see as you can see Felix excels when it comes to expected assists and pass completion rates well Lacazette has a better presser and both are very reluctant to shooting even though I like the potential and potential is crazy you don't break the bank break your transfer record break the Premier League transfer record to sign a player based on potential only but as per my friends let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments on Jao Felix and would you be open to see Arthur signing him reportedly for the price tag of 110 million pounds moving on to the central midfield now we all know that Arthur want to sign a brand new midfielder but what type of profile are Arsenal looking for? And first things first, here's a photo from the weekend of Granite Xhaka. Look at him in that box, attacking, making a third man run and potentially even get an assist if he could have kept himself onside. It once again confirms to us Arsenal fans that we are indeed moving now, transitioning into this 4-3-3. And that's what Mikel Arteta requires, a different type of profile player that is more like a number 8. But could that be Napoli's Spaniard in Fabian Ruiz? Well, according to Tom Hopkinson, Arsenal are running provisional checks on Napoli's midfielder Fabian Ruiz as they consider a move for him in the summer. Representatives of the club are understood to have met with the player's agents in a bid to understand his demands. The report also claims that Mikel Arteta is a big fan of his compatriots and believes he would add the kind of qualities that he's been trying to instill in his group in North London. Napoli would want around £16 million plus extras for Fabian, while the player is understood to be seeking a four-year deal. 25 years of age, a Spanish international entering the peak of his powers, 15 capped to the Spanish national team and the player so far this year has five goals and three assists. In terms of the profile of play, he is the definition of a number eight and he is a very very secure passer and here is actually a comparison graphic of Fabian Ruiz and Granit Xhaka. 
And as you can see, Ruiz in that light blue, he excels when it comes to all the passing metrics and he's a very, very secure passer. But also in terms of the defensive phase, you can also hold Ruiz accountable. The fact that he's also scored five goals from central midfield indicates that he would be an upgrade on Xhaka, but ultimately speaking, Arsenal are going to have a lot more targets. You've got Yuri Tielemans, you've got Ruben Neves, players that are far more Premier League proven, but also you could say different type of profiles. But in terms of Fabian Ruiz, the most standout point here is the price tag, £16 million for a player that's entering the peak of his powers that has a lot of experience of high level football this can be seen as a very sensible opportunity a very sensible signing if Arsenal were to make happen but be sure to talk to me down below in the comments on Mr Fabian Ruiz and at 25 years of age at 60 million pounds of the price tag do you guys want to see Arsenal sign a Spaniard moving on to the Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta because according to Mark Owen he claims that Arsenal are set to hand Mikel Arteta a bumper pay rise and a new 8.3 million pound a year deal Dan Kroenke is keen to emphasize his confidence in Arteta by sanctioning a three-year contract Contract, which will be worth around £25 million for the Spaniard. Now, as things stands, in terms of Arteta's current Arsenal contract, he's only going to have one year left in the summer. So, in terms of that, and Arsenal, it's very clear from Arsenal's side and the ownership side, they want to continue to back the manager. They want to give him the faith, the confidence, the money to spend. Hence why they're offering him a three year contract extension and also a very decent pay rise. Now, some Arsenal fans, of course, are going to disagree in terms of, oh, they want to see top four, they want to see tangibles. But in terms of this Arsenal board, they have always backed this whole Mikel Arteta Arsenal project and they will continue to do so. But what do you guys make of the Arsenal manager and what are your current thoughts on? This whole Arteta Arthur project, and would you be happy if Arthur gave him a three year contract extension? Dare I even say, do you trust the process? Okay, moving on, let's talk Arsenal versus Wolves. Massive gargantuan game for Arsenal, yeah, yeah, we've heard it all before, but in terms of this game, it actually is very gargantuan. Up against a very, very decent Wolves side, of course, who Arthur beat a few weeks ago, but since then, Wolves have won the last two games against Spurs away and also being Leicester at home. So, not only have Wolves picked up form, but Bruno Lodge's men are also coming back to the Emirates Stadium looking for a bit of revenge because, of course, course their players were left very angry because the Arsenal players apparently over celebrated during a win at Molyneux so with that all kept in mind it is going to be a very interesting game but what is the latest team news Arsenal will receive a major boost as Gabriel Martinelli is set to return to the squad the Brazilian missed the win over Brentford due to suspension after being controversially sent off against Wolves earlier this month you also have Takehiro Tomiyasu who wasn't risked on Saturday after only recently returning from a calf injury but he could be back in the squad on Thursday Arteta didn't pick up any fresh injury concerns at the week Ken, so the Gunners boss has a fully fit squad to choose from. And as for Wolves, they will assess Willy Bolly as he bids to return from a calf problem, while Yerson Mosquera is also a doubt with an ongoing thigh injury. And we also can't forget the returning Pedro Neto, the player that wasn't available to play against Arsenal in their last game, but now he's back, he's fit and available after spending nearly a year on the sidelines. He was Wolves' player of the year last season, and ultimately he is one of their best players, so even if he comes with a bench, this guy is going to cause Arsenal issues. But what about Arsenal? How are they going to line up? Well, in terms of myself, I've gone for Ramsdale and goal, Takehiro Tomiyasu, Ben White, Gabriel Antini as the back four, Xhaka and Partey in midfield, you've got Odegaard, Smith, and Saka as the players behind Alexandre Lacazette. Now I'm not trying to slam the Cedric Suarez because he's actually very decent against Brentford but in terms of Takehiro Tomiyasu, he's also starting right back so now that he's fit and available, they're going to work him in back. And in terms of the rest of the Arsenal team, now we do have Gabriel Martinelli back but at the same time Smith Rowe scored a goal and I don't think he's going to drop him going into this game. And yeah, well you have all the recent reports of Gabriel Martinelli reportedly training as a centre forward. I just think in terms of this game, it's going to be Alexandre Lacazette. He's the Arsenal captain as it stands, one of our most experienced players. So I think Lacazette is going to start. Now, tactically, this is going to be a massive game for Mikel Arteta because in terms of Wolves, they play a low block. They're going to soak up the pressure. They're going to invite Arsenal to have the ball. But of course, in terms of Arsenal at the Emirates, then we do have a very dominant record. But in saying that, in terms of Wolves, they were actually undefeated at the Emirates Stadium since they were promoted back to the Premier League. What are your own thoughts going into this game? What are your own personal Arsenal predicted lineups? And most importantly, Importantly, what are your Arsenal match day predictions? Okay, let's move on to the other Arsenal news today. And starting off with, um, let's go to Spain, let's go to Barcelona, Catalonia, and let's start off ex Arsenal player, ex Arsenal captain, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Now, of course, he plays for Barcelona, and in a game against Valencia, he scored a hat trick at the Mestalla. Three goals against Valencia, as Arsenal fans might remember, the Europa League semi final in 2018 19. But in terms of Aubameyang, he's also said, I have many friends in my previous teams, and I don't forget them. Whenever I can I watch their games. For example, Arthur beat Brentford 2 1 on Saturday. Not only had he just scored a hat trick in his first La Liga start, but in terms of Arthur Football Club, most importantly, he still got time to watch our gargantuan institution, which of course is things you love to see. So, in terms of Pierre, keep doing your thing at Barca, keep scoring them goals, and yeah, keep having a bit of fun. Jack Wilshire has officially signed for Danish Super League side Aarhus Gymnastic Farining. 
contract until the end of the current season. Now, of course, in terms of Super Jack, he was training at Arsenal's London Connolly, and despite a lot of Arsenal fans actually begging Arsenal's manager Mikel Arteta to give Super Jack the return to the Emirates Stadium and give him a contract, as Mikel has always made it clear, Jack was only training with the Arsenal first team to keep his fitness up until he found a brand new club. And so with that now being the case, let's just say best of luck to Super Jackie Wilshere in the Danish Super League. It is that time of the day as Emil Smith has scored nine goals in the Premier League this season. Only Mo Salah, Diego Jota and Raheem Sterling have scored more. And here's another stat for you guys that no Premier League midfielder has scored more goals than Emil Smith Rowe this season. So factually speaking, Smith Rowe is the best goal scoring midfielder within the Premier League. But in terms of how he has scored those goals, as pointed out here, Smith Rowe has only scored one more Premier League goal with his right foot six than his weaker left with five. Now the whole career in KDB of course was all banner and jokes but the fact this guy is factually proven that he also has a five star weak foot just like KDB I've got to keep myself in check because I am starting to get just a little bit excited. And here's another stat for you guys that Arsenal have won six and lost just one to Man City over their last eight Premier League games. And not just that but Arsenal are also 11 points better off than at this stage last season. I think you can understand why so many Arsenal fans are excited but as it stands the focus is very clear and that is until the end of the year we've got around 15 league games to play Wolves on Thursday and the goal is very simple my friends and that is Champions League football I want to go to the Emirates next year and I want to hear the Champions League anthem ringing round and I want to see Arsenal fans happy again believing again but talk to me about yourselves and what are your current thoughts on this Arsenal team how good of a team do you guys think this team can be and do you believe in this whole Mikel Arteta, Odegaard, Saka, Smith Rowe, Martinelli for anyone you want there do you believe in this project but that is the video very and there if you guys have enjoyed make sure to smash a like on it and also to subscribe to the channel if you are new if you would like to follow your boy on them social medias then the links will be down below in the description but that was all the latest awful news today so i hope you guys have enjoyed and have been informed and in terms of thursday a massive game which i'm looking forward to to watching in new york don't ask questions i'll see you next time in a bit